Do you know it is possible to end up shitting on your spouse without intending to do so in the first place? That's what happens when you create an atmosphere for infidelity in your marriage. And in this video, I want to show you six ways that people can do that. Hi, welcome. My name is Mitchell and this is Mitchell's Journey, where we learn and grow together. Now, I want to give a shout out to my very first commenter on my last video. Simeon Day, thank you so much. God bless you. Now, let me get into the business of today by saying something a bit shocking. Some people who end up cheating on their spouse didn't set out on the get-go to do that. It will surprise you that some of them never wanted or planned to cheat on their partner. It just happened. It started off as an innocent, well-intentioned and harmless relationship with someone that escalated into what they never intended it to be. What happened? They created an atmosphere for infidelity and fed it. By creating an atmosphere for infidelity, I mean when you put yourself in a situation that could push you to become unfaithful to your spouse. I read the story of a married man who, out of the goodness of his heart, decided to help a young lady. He started mentoring her, and that means they were constantly communicating, constantly in touch. Not enough at first, just normal text messages, calls, and shit chats. But those shit chats and the time spent together, unknown to them, was bringing them closer. Before you know it, there was an emotional bond. The man noticed he had started developing feelings for this woman, and he always looked forward to their conversations. So even though this man's initial intention was good, but because he didn't draw the boundaries, feelings set in, and if he doesn't nip it at the board, he's going to cheat on his wife with this woman. And for me, infidelity comes in three forms. One, emotional or mental infidelity, which is the early stage of infidelity where sexual feelings are already growing and you're already entertaining inappropriate and lustful thoughts towards this person. It's only a matter of time under the right condition before you bow to the internal pressure to go physical. Two, virtual infidelity, where there is an exchange of inappropriate calls, video calls, text messages, or sexting, pictures or videos with this person. Three, physical infidelity, which is the actual sexual contact, which may involve penetrative or non-penetrative sex. In God's eyes, emotional and virtual adultery are just as serious as physical adultery. That's why Jesus said in Matthew 5, 28, but I say, anyone who even looks at a woman with lust has committed adultery with her in his heart. So whatever form of infidelity you are in, you are cheating on your spouse. Now, when it comes to sexual immorality, the best way to avoid it is to do the safe and the wise thing. Proverbs 2.16 says, wisdom will also save you from the adulterous woman, from the wayward woman with her seductive words. Wisdom no spiritual strength will save you. Your hormones don't respect spirituality. <laughs> no matter how spiritual you are, you are still human and you can be tempted. So it is foolish to deliberately put yourself in situations that tempt you when you could have avoided them. God created us sexual beings. And if we don't put measures in place, we can develop feelings for someone else other than our spouse and may eventually cross the threshold of sexual purity. So there are six ways you can create an atmosphere for infidelity in your marriage. One is by not setting up boundaries when dealing with the opposite sex. Feelings can be subtle and if you do not draw boundaries, it will mess you up. There are three kinds of boundaries that I believe that we ought to draw in order to safeguard our marriage from infidelity. But I won't be going into details in this video. Check out my next video for this information. The second way you can create an atmosphere for infidelity in your marriage is by constantly communicating or spending a lot of time online or offline with this person. Because spending a lot of time with someone can bring about bonding or intimacy if you are not careful. You may notice that somehow you become so free and familiar with each other to the extent where you discuss personal issues that you naturally wouldn't feel comfortable discussing with someone else. I know there are times when you can't control the back and forth interactions with someone, maybe because this person is your colleague at work or your business partner. But while at it, it is wise to draw your boundaries. 
draw the line keep your conversations necessary and formal and be conscious not to drift into intimate talks and that brings me to the third way you can create an atmosphere for infidelity in your marriage by having intimate conversations with this friend for instance you both confide in yourselves about your personal struggles your marriage your sex life and so on at this point you've become her go-to person her confidant and you both draw emotional comfort from each other you feel better and safer when you are in each other's company now because you have an emotional connection attraction could set in it's possible that someone who gets emotional comfort from you will be drawn to you because you've become like his or her comfort zone, her safe space. You make this person smile. This person feels secure around you. She feels safe or happy whenever she's with you. You give this friend the attention she craves for. It's only a matter of time before she begins to see your wife as her competition because she thinks you are in love with her. Number four, shutting at odd hours. For instance, you retire for the night and your spouse is sleeping by your side. And the next thing, you get a text message from this friend by 11 p.m. Are you sleeping? I can't sleep. And then you go on and respond. And the shutting starts. When you entertain that, not only do you disrespect your spouse, but you're also indirectly telling your friend that you don't mind him or her invading your privacy. And that is a strong indicator that your relationship is flawed. Number five, keeping secrets from your spouse. That's another great way for you to create an atmosphere for infidelity in your marriage. Remember, sin thrives in darkness. When you start hiding your phone or your password from your spouse, or you start hiding your friendship with this friend from your spouse, that's another indicator that whatever dealings you have with this person is already corrupt. And it's a sign that you should end it before it escalates into infidelity. Learning to be open to your spouse is an art necessary to establish trust in your marriage. Being open to each other about our dealings with the opposite sex takes away every form of insecurity or trust issues in our relationship. It's called accountability. It helps to put us in check and ensures we don't cross setting boundaries with these people. And we also have full access to our phones. He knows my password, I know his. It shows that we have nothing to hide. The sixth and the final way that people can create an atmosphere for infidelity in their marriage is by having the wrong mindset about marriage. This happens when you don't place a value on your spouse, on your marriage, and on God's word. And in so doing, you may find yourself looking outside your marriage for sexual pleasure. When you have a godly mindset about marriage, you will work at making your spouse the only object of your desire where the thought of sleeping with another person repulses you. Few minutes of sexual pleasure is not worth your marriage, your children, your future, your salvation, your eternity. Think of all you stand to lose because of infidelity. Avoid the Esau syndrome according to Hebrews 12, 16. Don't trade away God's lifelong gift to satisfy a short-term appetite. Do everything you can to protect your blessings. Do the safe and the wise thing. Hebrews 13 verse 4 says, Let marriage be held in honor among all, and let the marriage bed be undefiled, for God will judge the sexually immoral and adulterous. So what other ways can someone create an atmosphere for infidelity in their marriage? Let me know what you think in the comment section. See you soon in my next episode where we will be talking about boundaries. I want to thank you so much for watching up until now. Till I come your way next time. God bless you. Bye.